Mina san, konnichiwa. Actually, I'd say konbanwa this time since it's a bit late here in Japan. Uh, as always, I'm Davide, I'm here from Tokyo and I'm bringing you an update on the situation of the Japanese borders and how this is affecting international students, families and workers who are stranded outside Japan. There is quite a lot going on uh, this time and I'll try to share as much as I can with my update. But as always, I want to start first giving you an update on the uh, vaccination in Japan and the current cases since, of course, this is one of the key metrics that we need to keep an eye uh, to also understand when the borders will open. And as you can see, vaccination is progressing steadily. Uh, it's the 1st of September, I'm making this video the 1st of September, and we have 57% of people that have got the first dose of vaccine. Um, all of them will get the second dose of vaccine uh, within three or four weeks, depending if they got uh, uh, Pfizer or Moderna, which means that by the end of September, we will be around 57 or even better, we will be close to 60%, which is 10% more the original goal that Japan had. Japan wanted to vaccinate 50% of their population by the end of September. And we are talking about reaching 59 to 60. Look into this data. I think we will be close to 60. Maybe we won't reach 60 by the end of September. So this is really important. That will give an extra reason or extra momentum to our actions to ask for the borders to reopen in October because the you know majority of the population will have the two doses of vaccines. Uh, the other thing is that if we see uh, October, we can reach for sure uh, even 70, 75% by the end of October, which is again is earlier from their original goal. So that's uh, something really good. The other good news is that cases for this wave seem to have topped to about the 5,000 we had last week. Of course, I can't really know what's going to happen in the future. However, as you can see in this news, it says here that for 10 days in a row, the cases were less than the week before. So, for example, this Wednesday, we got 3,000 cases, 3,168 cases, which is 1,060 less than the cases we have uh, the same day last week. And that has been for 10 days in a row. So surely that shows a downward trend in terms of cases. And you can see this also uh, in terms of nationwide. Sorry, this data is the Tokyo cases, 3,168 for Wednesday, and this is the national uh, nationwide data. We had uh, 18,000, and you can see here that cases are going slightly down. Also, you can see in this graph, things are finally going down, so that could be the top of the wave when we had 5,000 in Tokyo and 20, 25,000 in uh, whole Japan, and also active cases are also slightly go, starting to go down. So this, again, um, we should never had this wave for sure, but it's better this wave happen in August rather than in September. So try to think positively in this way as well. Talking about something it's really hard to be positive about. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw my tweet already. So I found out that um, a bit more news about the uh, event that uh, DJs are getting visa for. So th there is a event called Supersonic which was supposed to happen the 18th and 19th of September, so in three weeks from now, in uh, Chiba, very close to Tokyo, and in Osaka. Now there was a news that we're saying that the Osaka event was canceled because it's difficult to move the DJs, in, considering the current state of emergency, in uh, one day from uh, Tokyo, from Chiba to, to Osaka. However, the Chiba event is happening. Not just that, if you read this article, they say that the international artists, so the 10 international DJs, they got their visa already. So regardless of the event to be canceled or not, at the moment I'm speaking, the Tokyo event, the Chiba event is supposed to happen. But even if they cancel the event next week, the fact that 10 people, 10 DJs have got a visa is absolutely unacceptable, considering the situation that students, workers, and families have been going through for a year and a half. And to be honest, I don't really care much that it's only 10 people. It doesn't matter. Uh, these things shouldn't happen. I'm trying to bring this up to um, politicians and institutions, including the Ministry of Education and Foreign Affairs. We actually told, spoke with someone 
and they looked surprised. It's like they didn't know, but someone must know. And I really want to try to find a reason behind it. Of course, they gave a special visa for them. They're not coming as tourists. They surely uh, gave a special visa. I don't know if they, even if they're asking them to quarantine, because if they're asking them to quarantine, they should come pretty soon, because 14 days, 15 days, they should be quarantined, so they should come this week. So unless we start seeing Zed and the other DJ in Japan very soon, these DJs are even exempt to quarantine for a mass gathering event, which should never happen. So there are many things that are not right here. And you know, I express my feelings in this tweet. By the way, if you don't follow me on tweet, I um, recently, unfortunately, because of the situation, I'm tweeting daily, and you can also follow me on Twitter. I will link my, my Twitter in the description as well. Uh, moving on, uh, there is another update I want to give from my Twitter since I'm here. Uh, I wrote this today. Actually, I today my first direct meeting in my life with a member of the Japanese parliament, which was an interesting experience. I pretty much listen all the time. And uh, I had other members of our association working on education institutions of com, schools, etc., that were the one presenting the facts. And actually, surprisingly, the meeting went really well. I was really positively surprised how much this person knew about the situation of international students and how much supportive the person is. Now, I don't want to create also false expectation of things changing in, in a week or so. However, I want people to know and understand that there is a lot of Japanese people, not just schools, uh, not just education related, but as if you've seen my last event, you've seen Japanese people from different industry, from different background, even young students, are, they understand the situation of international students and they want to do something to help them. So please don't mix uh, general um, judgment on Japan and Japanese people based on what's the government is doing right now. And even if you talk about the government, it's not everyone in the government, of course. I think the situation is awful, it's absolutely unfair. There are so many double standards and Japan is pretty much the only country in the world together with, the, uh, with China and maybe a few more that is not allowing students to come. So we need to really fight for it and we need to really try to raise awareness about it. But at the same time, I wanna everyone to know that I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing myself a lot of understanding from Japan and Japanese people about the situation of international students. So there is a lot of positive thing to talk about and uh, a lot of positive things that will come for students. I hope very soon, I cannot tell, unfortunately no one knows when the borders will open, but positive things will happen. Please just have a positive mindset as well and this will really help you to go through, be, uh, bear these difficult times. And moving on, another positive news it's this news from, uh, um, I got it here, from Yahoo Japan. And basically what is saying, the title, it's saying that um, the Federation of Economic Organization, Kaidan Ren, which I mentioned many times in my channel, it's really active trying to restore the normal um, traffic, at least from a business point of view, but it will affect students positively as well. It's calling the government to take new measures to exempt people from returning, returning home and quarantine with vaccines. I can read everything in here because it's uh, really short and I want everyone to, to know what's written. The Kaidan Ren, Japan Business Federation, plans to ask the Japanese government to consider exempting vaccinated people from returning home or quarantine after entering Japan. The Kaidan Ren draft proposal calls for shortening the quarantine period after returning to Japan or entering the country from the current 14 days to a maximum of 10 days and urging the government to consider exempting vaccinated people from the quarantine. The Kaidan Ren says it's necessary to start preparing for the normalization of socioeconomic activities such as business traffic and plans to release a draft proposal early next week and ask the government to implement the measure. So Kaidan Ren is a very strong business association. Government will have to listen. So that's a good point. Second thing on the less positive side, I said many times, they are focusing on business and they're focusing mostly on people going out from Japan and coming back. However, any change in the right direction will eventually affect positively students. So there is a hope that maybe not right away, also those rules will apply to students. And believe me, I'm quarantined now, being vaccinated and having to go through a PCR test before flying, after flying, 
and it feels a bit odd to be honest because I sure I'm sure I don't have the virus I cannot go out now I cannot even take it uh, but I still have to be at, at home for 14 15 days I think that's unnecessary uh, I think Japan is following the guidelines that were set by WHO maybe last year the beginning of the pandemic I think all over the world vaccinated people uh, more and more are exempted to quarantine or they have shortened quarantine. And even if you're not vaccinated, you usually don't stay 15 days. You maybe stay five or 10 days. Again, this shows that Japan is just slow. I don't think they are attacking foreigners in particular right now, since also Japanese people are affected. I know many Japanese businessmen cannot fly out because for them it's impossible to come back and stay home 15 days because maybe their office doesn't allow them to work from uh, from home or even though they can work from home, they can't because their job requires them to, to move. They took the vaccine, they are okay to take PCR, they may be okay to stay a few days home just in case, but they can't stay 15 days so they cannot do their normal business activities traveling outside. So this is actually uh, shows that many of the uh, indecision or lack of decision and uh, slow decision process, which is a big, big topic uh, we could talk about a bit more, but this low decision process by the government is affecting also Japanese people, and I think it's not targeted to foreigners. That's my personal opinion, of course. I, I um, acknowledge, I respect everyone's opinion. I just, of course, in my YouTube channel, I express my, my personal opinion, and any, everything I say here is really my personal opinion and my personal knowledge. So please understand that also everything I say is my personal uh, thinking and my personal judgment. The last thing I would like to show today, which I'm pretty excited to do, I translated for you the proposal for border reopen for international students. And sorry if I focus on international students here, but as I said many times, I came in Japan as an international student. I been I started a study abroad agency ten years ago, and I've been working with schools with students pretty much all my Japanese life, so for the past 12 years. And of course, I'm very well connected uh, with students and with education, and that's where I think I can make a difference, even if it's little, that's really, I think, where I can uh, do something. And I live to Canada Den and business association like uh, the JATA, their space to actually work on the business side. I would really don't know what to do if I have to talk about uh, business visa or business track and so on. But uh, what I want to show is this uh, roadmap here. Let's see if it loads. It loads. It's a bit slow. It's a bit small. Let me let me make it bigger. Actually, I think I can. Uh, and let's see if I can present. Sorry, I, I'm trying this for the first time. I hope it works. But. Um, so this is our roadmap for accepting international students. We presented this in Japanese on the 18th of August event. I will be ready with a English translation, English subtitle version of our full event very soon. And I will link it on the top of this video when it's ready. So you may actually see it depending on uh, with which timing you're watching this video. But uh, uh, basically we started presenting first what we want to say that uh, Every other G7 country, so Japan together with US, England, Canada, Italy, France, and Germany. Sorry, I didn't translate this right part, but uh, uh, this say Italy, France, and Germany. They're all currently accepting students, including of course Japanese students, but they're all currently accepting students. In the G7, Japan is the only country that is not accepting students. And US and England, they've always been accepting students, they never stop accepting students. Canada started in October 2020, and for Italy, France, and Germany, probably following European uh, legislation, they started accepting students from June 2020. So they probably closed the borders for three, four months from March to June, but then from June last year, so they've been regularly accepting students. And uh, in Japan, as we've seen right now, already uh, 46% of the population has been vaccinated, and by the end of September, they're plan is to vaccinate 50% of the population, but they will surely hit this goal. Actually, I expect more than 55%, close to 60% to be vaccinated by September, and they want to vaccinate all the population that needs a vaccine, that wants a vaccine by the end of November, and I think if they continue like this, they will meet this target, um, which is a positive thing. On the other side, G7 countries have a higher 
vaccination rate. That's an average that uh, um, was made. Basically, about 52.5% of, of the population is vaccinated into the G other G7 countries except Japan. And by the end of September, already 70% of the population is planned to be vaccinated. This includes a lot of the students. So a lot of the students, actually, because they know they're going to go abroad, they already took their vaccine shots. And they are able, actually, to come to Japan to start studying already with a, with a vaccine. Um, also, important events that happen. Max student, you probably have seen in September. Now students are coming in in August. Actually, they started entering from uh, June. And I made a video about this in June, as soon as the news came out. Um, Max students, uh, govern, Japanese government sponsored international students are already coming in from June. They stopped only during the Olympic and Paralympics because they wanted to, probably Japan wanted to focus on, on the Olympics, but they already started and now they will continue to enter. Together with that, also we know that JET teachers, JET program teachers, they are entering from September to December. They are already receiving emails, organizing, etc. I, I, I show that as well in this channel. The Paralympic will land the 5th of September, so very soon, finally. And October student term starts. So university students and also language students, vocational school students, they all start between end of September, um, beginning of October. There is another term only for language students that is January. Not every language school has also a January start uh, because it depends how many terms they have. Some students have either October or April. So January is, is not a possible start for everyone. University students, for example, cannot start in January, and also some language students cannot start in January. So ideally, we really want to see something happening by October or in October, or maybe, you know, I don't want to say November, but, you know, as soon as possible. Japan has started to have their own vaccine passport from July 26th, and uh, I think this is a proof that if they want to really use vaccine as a proof of, you know, a vaccine passport as a proof of vaccination. Of course, that shouldn't be, they should accept everyone vaccinated, not just the one people vaccinated in Japan. I know that a lot of people are saying also in this channel, Japan shouldn't let only vaccinated students enter. And I agree on that. My proposal would be maybe vaccinated students, they have a less quarantine or no quarantine. Not vaccinated, they still enter with quarantine. Um, that's just as, as an idea, right? I'm not going into details. But what I want to say is that at least it's something. Even Japan starts accepting vaccinated students only, or even if Japan starts saying, oh, if you're not vaccinated, you need to do a longer quarantine, I think it's already a start. We don't want to go into the details now on discussing about vaccine, yes or not, about this. I think we should, we should just accept any positive move in the directions we want Japan to take. What have, have you been doing uh, with our actions? So educationsontourism.com, in Japanese we call Nyon Ryugaku, Corona Ka no, Nyon Ryugaku no Tobira o Iraku Kai. That sounds like opening the borders to international students during Corona. Because we know Corona is not going to be zero <laughs> any time, not even next year, not even in two years. So. I hope Japan understand, and I want to be positive, I'm sure they will at some point, hopefully soon, that you need to really open the borders in the right way, with the right control, with the right procedure, even before the case go to zero. So you are vaccinating your population, which is great. You are taking precautions like PCR tests, tests which is great. You may ask for quarantine, hopefully not 15 days, but a shorter quarantine just in case which is fine. I'm sure all of you will comply to these rules, but you need to open the borders because you can't isolate yourself for so long. You're going to really hurt your economy. And uh, I've read also the people saying, ah, but Japan cares about the concert, you know, this DJ is coming. I think that's not even the case because a concert is not going to bring as, many, as much money that you students, you workers, you families too, are going to bring to Japan because each one of you is bringing friends in the future, is bringing families to Japan, is bringing a lot of things. You may start working in Japan if you, if you are a student, you eventually will start working with Japan, in Japan, you will pay taxes if you are a worker or when you become a worker. Even as a student, you may actually contribute to society a lot. So 
maybe the, some people don't understand that in Japan, they don't think about it, but your contribution is 100 times more than what a DJ could do or any, anyone else like that. Not because DJs are not important, just because that's one event versus your long-term impact. Because of that, one, one of the things we really want to do as our association and our actions is, is, of course, supporting students and, of course, asking the government to open the borders, but also make Japan and Japanese people understand how important are students, workers, and family for the Japan future. That's, I think, is one of the really point we are trying to reach. That's why most of our events, most of our documentation and our actions are actually in Japanese. I try to communicate with all of you to tell what we are doing, but I think me and you can really understand each other very easily because we are come from the same side. What we really need to try to do is communicate in a way that is easy to understand for, uh, for Japan. And at the end, is a win-win if international students can come safely and can contribute to the Japan society. And Japan can be more globalized and have more diversity in their universities, in their schools, in their social life in general. Moving on, so what we did with our association, we start collecting student questionnaire. And from here, you can see how much important has been each one of you from the very beginning in really trusting myself and our association, Gogo Nihon, trusting us, giving your time, giving your input, giving your stories, giving your videos. Because without that, we couldn't really reach the politician like we did today. Without all these steps, so we start in, in June really collecting just questionnaires. We put the questionnaires on the website, if you remember, with photos. You, many of you submitted us photos. You really, really worked with me, with us, to get to this point. And, and thanks to you, I cannot, I don't know when the borders will open, but I can guarantee that the border will open earlier they would, that they would have opened without all these actions. I'm sure we are speeding up things. Japan is really slow. They need speed up. They need this type of action from someone, from, uh, from some entity. Uh, first event we did, uh, if you remember, it was in July. We invited students to talk. It was broadcasted on NHK, national television, during the midday news. That was huge. A lot of people uh, saw it. And thanks to that, we received so many new supporters. So that was the first step. We made an event thanks to the students participating, thanks to the story you submitted. Thanks to that, we got a lot of other supporters. Thanks to those supporters, together with the core members, the, the schools that are working with me in our activities, we made a second event where we had the first politician member of the parliament attending, former Minister of Education. So huge participation. You can see the event. I, I will link it here. But you can watch the event. Uh, you, can, you can also listen to the uh, Mr. Nakagawa-san words of total support for international students. Thanks to the second event, we moved further, and now we're talking with politicians, and we, we want to have a third event. We haven't finalized the details. Um, it's really hard to have personal life work, because, of course, I still run Google World, Google Nihon, and also working on all these activities. So sometimes I want to really to do things every day, a lot of things, but sometimes it takes a bit of more time. But we're going to have a third event in September where we want to have some kind of... Uh, panel discussion with, uh, with, with again, uh, Japanese people and students and also involve uh, politicians to see if something can really be done sooner rather than later. And uh, what we ask here, sorry, we get, I, I go to the end of my proposal, not my proposal, sorry, our proposal, because that's something we have worked, all of us has worked on this in the past three months from June is the resumption of entry for international students from October 2021. Because students are getting vaccinated, because corona cases are going down, because Japanese population is getting vaccinated, because it's been over a year and a half, and students are willing to take PCR quarantine and following all the measures. The schools are willing to make a pledge where they will be responsible for the students coming. They will, of course, offer students a safe environment to study as well. So everyone will work together for the safety of Japanese population, safety of students, for the benefit of the Japan society to bring international students in Japan. And I surely believe that's possible from October. Of course, the timing is running out, I understand. And there is a lot of discussion to be made. Still, our goal is to have students to come at some point in October in and really do everything we can uh, this month to raise awareness and to talk about the situation of international 
students. That's everything for today. And I really apologize if my videos are getting longer and longer. I swear that each time I write a schema, before each video, I write a schema of what I want to talk. I prepare a few things and I promise myself, I tell myself that this time I'm going to you know, make it more focused because everyone, of course, has a limited amount of time and I want you to get all the important information, but then I just end up talking like this. And I feel when I finish the video that since, you know, I've given extra information, I would rather, you know, share it rather than cutting here and there. And also cutting each time would require so much time. So really sorry about that. I really, 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 from, a bot from the bottom of my heart, appreciate all of you that watch through all the video, or even if you skip, if you use the description to skip to the part you are interested, really, really huge thank you. But more than every, everyone, I wanna thank everyone that has been liking, sharing my video. I know many of you each time are doing a great job at really helping our voice to be heard, sharing even a, little, even a single share, really could reach new people, really could reach actually uh, a company that could support us, or could reach a person, a student that could submit an extra, form that will be read by some politician that will actually make a difference. So I think really every little like, every little share is helping us a lot to get to where we, have, we are now. And huge thank you for liking, huge thank you for subscribing, huge thank you for sharing. If you're new to the channel, as always, I just ask you to subscribe if you're interested in uh, news about the Japanese borders or you are a student worker, family, stranded outside Japan, or planning to go to Japan, since the content that I'm creating and I will create will be very, very relevant to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Matane!